33 on Thursday, March the 12th. We are having public interviews for the Beaver Area School District Solicitor position. Before we get started, I wanted to give our superintendent, Dr. Perry Rowe, uh, a quick second to give an update on everything that's going on with our current public health issue oh. uh, just before we get started so everyone has an idea of what's going on currently. Okay, so if you're not aware, we um, put a second letter on the website today. Uh, this was a letter that was co-authored by all superintendents in Beaver County um, and the intermediate unit. Um, and it basically talks about all the things that we're doing for prevention and mitigation uh, throughout the county. Speaking with one voice, letting people know that we're working with uh, the Department of Health um, and taking advice from the CDC. So, um, you know, I have the wrong kind of doctorate to um, make the types of decisions that are going to need to be made in the near future about staying in school or going out of school. So people need to know that that, adv that advice is there for us um, and they're communicating. Um, tomorrow we have an early dismissal that's been planned. We have changed our plans from what we originally were going to do and every building is going to be um, getting an update from their principal about expectations in the event of a closure, um, what uh, things are supposed to look like for online learning. I, th I believe that grades 3 through 12 will have it the easiest because everybody has a Schoology page and everybody has an iPad. We are going to be changing our stance on uh, the grades 3 through 6 taking home their iPads and that will be communicated to parents but in the event that you know I hear at 12 o'clock at night that we need to close uh, I need the kids to have their iPad at home. That would that would be helpful. Um, so we're talking to kids. We will be talking to the teachers who will be relaying to kids. We're going to look at things in one week increments. Um, for example, this week in math, I want you to complete these three assignments instead of like on a day by day basis. Here's the the big picture of things. We're going to go for quality and not quantity of work. Um, and all of that done through Schoology. We've made uh, arrangements with our special education staff to make sure things uh, are modified appropriately, the assignments are modified, um, and I think we have the infrastructure in place to pull this off. Grades K1 and 2, kind of a totally different thing, even if they did have iPads, I don't think that'd really be the way to go. But we have some uh, interesting ways to keep them uh, on task and motivated and learning uh, that I'm actually rather uh, excited about. Nothing takes the place of being in the classroom with the teachers, but if they have to be out, I think we have a good plan for them. All of this will get communicated to the parents uh, in a, in a, uh, a letter from the principal of their building next week. Uh, early next week probably is the better option. So uh, then parents will be aware we're going to do it the same way. We will post it on the website and then direct people's attention to it. If I didn't say so tonight at 7 o'clock, all parents and guardians and teachers will get a mass notification about the letter that we currently have on our website. Just making sure that everybody is directed to you. Yeah, CTC is probably our biggest, our biggest concern. They, um, because it's a half day program. So if you go half day in your home school and then you get on a bus and you go to the CTC and mingle with all the other school districts, if somebody there it has an infection that they're not aware of, and then you go back and you spread it back in your home district, pretty much game over for Beaver County, right? Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's super important that all of the superintendents and the CTC director continue to, to communicate and that we're using the advice from the CDC. Yeah. Um, what if there are students that have traveled um, in Europe and they come back and they're in the school? Right, so the letter that uh, is on the website right now actually addresses that. We can't force people to tell us when they've traveled. 99.9% .9 of our parents and, and teachers will tell us that. They'll let us know what their travel plans are, they'll let us know if they've been somewhere, where there is an outbreak. For example, we just had a, a, a teacher whose child uh, was learning overseas 
in Italy. Um, and it, that came to our attention. We found out though that the child had been back, or I mean adult child at this point, uh, has been back for over three weeks and that prior to leaving Italy was checked um, and has no symptoms, all these types of things. So people are talking. So we're of course encouraging our faculty to continue that and the letter that's on the website asks parents to please let their uh, principal know if they uh, have travel plans out of the region. I have one other question. Sure. I know on weekends we send food home to those children who need it. And is it our responsibility to get food to these kids that... You know, it may not be our responsibility fiscally, but I believe it's our moral obligation. Right, right. That's right. Um, yeah. And so the answer to that is we are working on a plan with our current uh, cafeteria vendor and the uh, division of food and nutrition at PDE now has a, um, a specific form, because we like bureaucracy, <laughs> that we can fill out to help get us uh, what we, the waivers that we need not to serve in a, and I think they call it a congregant matter, uh -huh. uh, manner. Uh -huh. So um, how exactly we're going to get the food to the people, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure it will have something to do with our transportation um, director or uh, administrators who care, one or the other. But yes, we are, we are absolutely, that is on the radar of things for us to, to find a way to deal with. Yeah, operating like a cruise. Everybody walks in and gets his work Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Other questions or concerns before we uh, get on to the matter at hand? Go ahead. Point of order? Like, if we're done with that, I have I don't, I'm not sure we are. I probably right, don't. No. You go, buddy. Don't. Don't do it. Right. Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions, we will, uh, uh, in between, if there's any overlap, we can certainly come back and we discuss. I want to make sure we get enough time and an equal amount of time for all, all candidates so was that your point of order yeah um, um because of my business dealing with a couple of current uh, applicants so solicitors i called the ethics commission today so talked to them about what i should do and what my issue was but my understanding came out of that being that um i should be excluded from the whole process anybody else has actual dealing should be excluded from the complete process tonight and they'll go monday too that's my understanding i'm an attorney that's how i took it so I would submit, I know Scott's got some dealings too. We probably, maybe we shouldn't be here tonight. And again, I don't know that, but that's what I came, I wanted to kind of bring that up, make sure we aren't, you know, breaking ethics plus, that's all, that's all. So I made a phone call today because I knew what I had in, 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 with my business. So I wanted to make sure I was clear on what I could or couldn't do. And that's what I came back with. But I, I don't know, I'm not an attorney, I don't know. We can't ask Janet, she's not here, so. Right, that some, would be awkward. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I don't know what to do about that. I just want to bring that up. That's, but I'm not sure what we should do. So. That's, that's why I asked meeting like if there was a clear ethics a, a list of, of things we should have seen. Well, I made the call because I wanted to be sure. I have a business to maintain. I don't show you anything happened to that. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. I agree. So, but I, I, we and do so to be clear, the advice you were given was that not only should you not vote, but you should also not participate in the interviews. That's what I understood. And by participate, does that mean that you shouldn't be present or you shouldn't ask questions? I didn't get the level of detail. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure okay. why. I, 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 I want to you know, pause. I, can I don't know what to I do. Make about. A call. I just, um, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just an IT. I, I would just ask, what do you feel most comfortable doing? We know you're not going to vote. Yeah. So, what do you want to do? I don't know what, what the best thing for us is. I, I don't want to ask. You've got dinner plans, <laughs> and it's <laughs> nice outside. I have no plans. I brought, I'm, 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 I'm comfy dressed. I'm just comfy. I'm ready to roll. Yeah. All yeah. Right so why don't we do this? I don't uh, do let's. We're going to pause very quickly, and we're going to reach out to uh, PSBA. to PSBA and get an answer. Like All right. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, PSBA has. We have. We can reach out. Hang on. So. Uh, Mr. Askar, we will make sure that any amount of time that is given to anybody else that you get that full amount of time. Right. All right. So I, now that if it's a half hour interview or 15 minutes interview, that's all I need. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Anymore. Well, either way, I will make sure that we, one way or another, that we get. I won't I feel slighted either way. Yeah. Can we go back to yeah. Corona? No. no she's not no. even here. No. Just yeah. stop. Oh, no, we have time. Yeah. Bob, do you think? 
So, Are you I mean, the virus? We'll, we'll see what they I'm say. But, uh, <laughs> what they say? Yeah, it'll be a Christmas if, surprise. If, uh, <laughs> if the answer is ambiguous, yeah. uh, do you think that I'm this is about it. it's is only less harmful? I mean, that wasn't sitting back here and listening. Because I am, because well, I am curious. Because I'd like to learn about whoever we're going to work with. Because I have had no orders, no legal. So I'd like to see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like I said, I just wanted to. Oh no, I agree. But what I'm saying is like that's just I, I, I'm not I'm not questioning the decision. I think it's probably the right thing. Like, that's a lot of money. For this. <laughs> But, I mean, they're having, 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 they're you were you were the star. Well, not it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. No, it never happens. I got no. the verbiage that said right. there's. Well, we should we should be in the room. We shouldn't be out here publicly doing this. This is so strange. I don't know if it's too late to propose it. But Why are we then? I mean, we don't have to be. What? We don't have to be doing this out here in public. We don't want to be. Why, so why? I mean, we've never done it publicly before. Last time, it wasn't even a process. We were told on Monday that we had to do it this way, and that's not true. I, I and during the board feels differently. We can certainly we can certainly talk about it. It's not too late. Right. Yeah. We're, we're the board that's still. That's not check. We're in. Having this problem. I guess we can. It is now, but we could always say no. Yes, we could. I mean, make it make so. And it was working. It says it's insurance connected and secure. Yeah, it's it's I mean, I just was on drama. It depends on what age group 
well. I understand yeah. it, but the seasonal flu is yeah. the exact same age group. Yeah, that's, that's true. The contagion factor is five times more contagious. So I get that. Well, maybe if China would have did what we're doing, maybe we wouldn't be in this mess. Yeah, well, Italy took well, a very a, soft stance right out of the Yeah, well, so, that, yeah, so we're taking right. a harder stance, so maybe it'll be better. This judge, it's like the world's ending. And they still have a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know if you saw Okay, All right. so back to it, 549. So I was able to uh, actually contact our solicitor's firm, PSBA, I was not able to get in touch with. Um, and uh, the response is that people can be present who have a conflict, but cannot uh, participate by asking questions or making opin opinion statements. Um, so, no questions is self-explanatory. Opinion statements would be like, hey, I'd vote for you, but I can't. Things like that. Um, so I was half right there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we think it probably best to, to let Denise just run the unorganized proceedings here? Just uh, we'll switch. Well, I think in... Don't give me that look. In that simply... What? I think in simply the running the proceedings, yeah, you are not favoring one person over another, okay. and you're also not going to be asking questions if you have a conflict. So That's you can questions. run the proceedings. Okay. All right. Close okay. questions. All right. One final. We, I, I, I just want to bring this up that mm -hmm. I'm in the disagreement that this is being held publicly, and I would like to make one final push to cancel that, if possible. We are a majority, and it was um, this meeting was advertised so we're allowed to make a vote if we want to vote to change that can we not no this was not advertised as a voting meeting but can we still not make that decision can you make the decision that you're going to vote tonight no 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 I'm sorry. this is a private meeting not a public meeting. I'm can we the cancel the fact that it's a public meeting if you are only wanting uh four or less board members to be present, then yes, you could. Jared, is there? Oh, that's the reason for it being public, because if you have more than five Yeah, but the, I, I'm but still in disagreement that, that, that this is. Okay. It still could yeah. technically be an executive session. Yeah. Executive session, it's my understanding, um, could be for contract issues, but you do not have a contract with your solicitor. You accept a fee agreement. The board can go into at will. a private meeting if they are, which we are doing, um, gathering of information and not deliberating or voting on anything. We're allowed to do this, something like this, in a, in a private meeting opposed to being in the public. I'm only telling you what it is that I know. I mean, I um, think we're too late at this point to begin with, but I, I would say that this should, it ha should have been done in, in a private meeting and not publicly. I don't know if we're too late to move it though. I don't know what ramifications are besides I would question perception. why you wouldn't want to proceed. <clears throat> I mean part of what you've wanted as a board is to increase transparency. I understand that but uh, hiring independent people in this manner I don't think there's a standard that's been set this way. That doesn't mean it can't be, but I think that from our standpoint, um, looking at a, a slew of candidates privately, there's no there's no impropriety or, or inability for us to not maintain transparency whenever we publicly make a vote on who that's going to be. This is a one of the boards here, so we're considering it. Has I to know, but we're all together often when we're in an executive session as well, and if. If we're collecting information, which this is exactly what we're doing, to be able to make a decision, then I, I'm still a firm believer that we are legally allowed to be able to do this. 
without being a public well, citizen. Well, if you would like to exercise that as a board, I can't stop you from doing that. I have clients who do this for a living, and 100% of so this has never happened to them, public session for interview. So for what it's worth, that's what I was told. It's not something that I sat down and, oh, no, and I, just created on my own. So again, the board makes the decisions. I recommend based on the information that I've been given. If you choose to do something other than this, that's your decision. I mean, I mean, you on this? I don't, you can't vote. Yeah. So there's no legal required procedure for selecting a solicitor, right? But I think we need to come to a conclusion quick because these gentlemen are away from their families and their practice and they're patiently waiting. And this should have all been resolved before 5.30 today. So I would someone love needs to gain control. control. Questions, but I can't. <laughs> so it's all simple questions, simple answers, but unfortunately I can't. <laughs> Who speak as your advisors? You could be posed hypothetical questions and how would you I how you would decide. <laughs> <laughs> we pose I, a hypothetical question. Yes, you can. Around? So Scott, what should we Hypothetically, question? what are our rights in this situation? Well maybe we I, can I, ask I don't a like different questions. Unless we ask <laughs> unless we ask every everyone who's gonna show up the exact same question. Yeah. We gotta make that commitment. If we're gonna ask them for what their insight is, which is that's a, it's a great first run. I have no problem asking them. We've got to make a commitment that we're going to ask each of our candidates the exact same question. Unless you have a compelling reason for not continuing in this manner tonight after it's been advertised to the community, I'd su I would suggest again that you move forward. Let's go. As Aaron said, this should have been. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely unorthodox, let's be honest, but I, I have no problem doing it in the public, and if, let's if go. people let's are go. coming, people are here, I, I don't have any. Sorry, gentlemen. I don't mean to delay it anymore. Proceed. I apologize. All right, we're going to get this on, on the road then. Again, um, Attorney Ashford, we're going to make sure that any time uh, afforded to you is the exact same amount of time uh, that anyone else will get. It's 5.56. We're going to begin yours right now. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, Again, I'm not going to ask questions or direct, but we'll let you kind of open, explain a little bit about who you are, and then we'll turn it over for question and answer uh, in both both ways, back and forth, however you guys want to do it. So, And before I get started, I just want to let everybody know that I do agree with um, Mr. Bickerton that uh, I would have a conflict of interest uh, with Mr. Peterson as well as Mr. Bickerton uh, because I do utilize his store. I do utilize his services on occasion. Um, I could see some people trying to claim that that's some perceived conflict of interest, uh, even though I probably bought a laptop from him three years ago. That might be enough for somebody to uh, taint the, 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 the process that this board has chosen to follow. As far as Mr. Peterson, I do. He is my financial planner uh, for myself and my family, so I do see a conflict of interest there until those conflicts are alleviated. Um, with that, I just want to make sure that I understand, being that Mr. Peterson, Mr. Bickerton, and myself both perceive these conflict of interests, I want to make sure that I understand from this board that they won't be offering any advice, any conclusions, any questions, or voting in this entire process. And that's what I'm looking for before I go forward. That's accurate. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, thank you. So with that being said, for the folks that don't know me, my name is Joe Asgard, uh, practicing attorney here in Beaver. Uh, not only do I practice here in Beaver, but I reside in Beaver uh, with my wife and two kids. I have one kid at your uh, Dutch Ridge school facility, and my other child, or our other child, is at your um, College Square facility. I will say that um, not born, but I have been raised pretty much the entirety of my life other than school and uh, other than college and law school in Center Township when it used to be Center High School. Um, when I came back home, I chose to move back to my home district uh, where all my friends and families are. And during that time, I started practicing law tend to believe I've made a pretty good career of it so far. Um, 
built a house, got married, had kids, and then uh, my wife, who's originally from this uh, district, uh, we were talking about moving. Uh, as Mr. Peterson or others may know, that see, that was a little bit of a battle because I wanted to be in Brighton Township. My wife wanted to be downtown where she grew up. But the sell for this place, for this district, was the school system. I didn't know not a person in the entire district <clears throat> other than my wife's family, Mr. Bickerton. <clears throat> the sell was the school district. I just want to stress that. The reason why I'm applying for this job is not because I need a couple more dollars in my pocket or because Mr. Rojas uh, needs a couple extra dollars in his pocket. I'll let Mr. Uh, Ron Rojas speak to himself, but he too is a Beaver graduate. He may have graduated with a couple folks on this board. I don't know. But Ron and I over the uh, years have worked out a very good uh, arrangement between the two of us attorneys. Uh, and where we work together a lot on a lot of uh, cases, especially civil cases, litigation cases, and uh, with my municipal clients as well. Um, <clears throat> I am here before you not looking for work only, but I do want to be a part of the team to continue, as I said in my letter, the reason why I chose this one. Great school district. I want to keep it that way. Great feather in a cap for this board and for the superintendent. You have an AYP school right up the hill. Not another school that could say that in the county right now. I think the last AYP school would have been down in mid. I'm not exactly sure. You mean the National Blue Ribbon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, Doctor? That's right. It, it's, it's been quite a few years, so that's a huge accomplishment. And I want to say that everything that's going on here with this, these public interviews, with the, the dissension going on on the board and this, that, I, I'm not a miracle worker. I am an attorney. Ron's an attorney. <clears throat> we will continue to try to do what's right for the school district. I'm not here for personalities. I'm not here to act as a sword. I'm not here to act as a shield. What I will do is I will protect the school board. I will work with the superintendent because that's typically what happens with the solicitors. We interact a lot. You could talk to my CEO down at PA Cyber. You could talk to my superintendent down in Midland. You could talk to the old superintendent in Center Township. This is the way it was when you come on in special counsel. That's your point of contact. Um, and I want to keep it that way. But I'm not going to act as that. Uh, guy coming in uh, looking to take people out. I don't believe that Ron is either. That was a long discussion that we had. It's a very tough discussion I had with my wife. Um, because I just want to practice law and continue to move Beaver in the, in the progress that you guys have been moving. I would ask any of you here today, uh, being that you do have a female superintendent, do you know what that ratio is across the country no. to have a female superintendent? Do any of you know that? One in four. My One in four. <laughs> That's it. And those were massive leaps and bounds over the years, over the past 10 years, because before that, it wasn't even 1%. So, you know, I look at Beaver County. I came back from Caracas, Venezuela to come back come back home and practice law. I look at Beaver County, we have two female superintendents. It's phenomenal for the little county that we have. Might be maybe three, I'm not sure. So I preface all of that by saying it's not that we're here because we need to work. We're here because we want to be. We don't have, Ron and I don't have large practices where we have to feed uh, a back office where we have to feed paralegals, where we have to feed anything else. We're feeding ourselves and a small staff. Um, with that being said, I've been practicing law since 1998. Before that, I told you folks I was in Caracas, Venezuela, working with an American law firm by the name of Baker and McKenzie. At that time, we were the second largest law firm in the world. I did a lot of municipal work there. Um, and I think that's where I got my knack to do government work because 
we got to work with um, several national uh, nationals as, uh, on behalf of the country of uh, Venezuela. So got home sick, mom got sick, came home, hung the shingle, and slowly built a practice and my reputation for what it is today. Uh, some folks may think that uh, I'm not the best attorney. Some folks may think that I'm the best attorney. Take it for whatever it's worth. Um, I, um, just to go through your points here, um, I, I am not a member of your school boards or the Pennsylvania School Board Solicitors Association. Uh, if that's something mandatory that this board is requiring, clearly we don't have the problem of paying a $500 a month a uh, year registration fee just so we could hang that moniker on our hat. Um, <clears throat> I am very active with the Pennsylvania School Board Association due to my affiliations in the past with school boards as well as uh, my current clients. Uh, obviously, I've been practicing more than eight years. Um, I, I am admitted, obviously, here in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm admitted uh, in the Western District uh, in federal court, the Supreme Court. Uh, we've all made appearances throughout. We've all made applications. This is Supreme Court. Uh, I have not had the um, I have not had the the pleasure of arguing before the Supreme Court, unfortunately. But I hope one day that I do have that opportunity uh, here in the state of Pennsylvania. Because to me, as an attorney, um, it, it, it's pretty nice to be able to stand in that courtroom and present your argument in bank. Um, so I, I do want to at least mention my qualification requirements that you folks have outlined in your RFP. Um, I can tell you because I didn't uh, put a detailed RFP together, uh, as my understanding was reading the RFP that you, were, you folks were going to be doing interviews, making selections, getting the information that you would need from us folks to better uh, understand or to better feel comfortable in whatever decisions you were going to make to hire a solicitor that would be representing you folks moving forward. I can tell you that both of us do have extensive labor law and employment law experience, uh, uh, labor negotiations, grievances, arbitrations. If you do municipal law, whether it's representing a community, whether it's representing a school district, whether it's representing an authority, you've run the gamut. Uh, the only difference I see between a uh, school district and these other municipalities is that I'm dealing with the public department of education, uh, the federal laws pertaining to education, uh, special ed uh, process, uh, procedures and processes, dealing with your due process rights. Um, and I could tell you that I feel comfortable in all those areas. I mean, I, I think a lot of you know that I represent Pennsylvania Cyber School, largest public school in the entire state of Pennsylvania. I could tell you that we probably do more special ed cases in two to three months than you folks probably do an entire year. Um, it's an unfortunate thing, but when you're dealing with uh, uh, close to 11,000 students, quite a few of those students do need those um, appropriate uh, levels of care. Um, financing, uh, taxes, I, I, as, you, as some of you know, I was a county tax, um, let's strike that, I was the county solicitor for 15 years as the assistant solicitor and then at least eight years, five plus years as the chief solicitor. Um, I think that if you talk to any of the uh, school board members or superintendents or business managers when I was there, I handled every single tax <coughs> assessment appeal and every single tax case that ever came to Beaver County uh, in the last probably eight years that I was with the county. I don't think that there's too many people that know tax law better than I do or assessment law better than I do. Ron, again, I keep stealing a little bit of his thunder, but um, in his capacity as um, an assistant solicitor at one time, uh, he became very familiar with tax assessment law, tax sell laws, uh, and as we all know, that uh, 
You can blame me for the reassessment. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> he was the attorney that successfully um, is forcing the county through a reassessment. So that's not something that you folks should take lightly because it's going to hit home. There's going to be a lot of upset residents, including myself, because I do believe that our taxes here in, in this district are, are absolutely going to go up. Uh, when it comes to um, bond council and, and, and municipal debt and things of that nature, I've represented many school districts in various capacities uh, as bond council, as underwriters council, as disclosure council. Uh, we had just floated a bond in Central Valley where I acted as Central Valley's Disclosure Council. Um, I was instrumental in floating the first uh, tax incremental financing bond here in Beaver County. I think that was the only TIF bond that has been um, chased down and successfully completed. Um, I mean, the, 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 I'm very versed in that, but things of that nature doesn't um, cause uh, Ron or I any consternation. Um, I know that you guys in your RFP stated that you all, your primary criteria is you're looking for the highest quality and the most cost effective uh, services out of your new solicitor. Uh, I, I would tend to venture to believe that of the folks that I heard on your public meeting, um, uh, video from last week, I would have to imagine that you would be getting great high quality experience uh, from any of those firms, whether it's Mayella Brunga, whether it's uh, Price Andrews, or I can't remember the other firm, uh, or even uh, Mr. Fidelis' firm. They're all good attorneys, they're all good firms. I'm not here to say that I'm better than any one of them, but I am here to tell you none of them are better than me. I am on equal footing with any experience or any subject that may come across uh, this board. So I'm not here to tell you that I'm better than anybody, but I will tell you that nobody's better than me. Um, cost effective services, that's easy. Let's sit down and talk about what, 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 what your current fees are, you know, it, 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 I, if it were up to me, I'd be looking at a blended sort of uh, fee structure where uh, you would be paying us an hourly rate uh, if you wanted to pay a retainer to make sure that we're uh, at your disposal on a pretty much uh, on-call basis. Now, there's going to be times that we're in court. I won't be able to take that call, but um, you could ask any of my private clients or existing municipal clients. Their calls are typically returned that same day. Um, at, the, at, at, at my soonest available uh, moment. Um, as far as your bond, I saw that you guys were floating a bond. I would very much like to be a part of that process. Uh, I don't know if you guys have your FA selected. I don't know if you guys have your underwriters selected. But there's a lot of stuff there, especially for the new members of this board. It's critical and that they need to understand. Uh, Dr. Rowe, I, I don't know if this is the first bond that you've been a part of here in in Beaver, but I can only imagine that this is your first rodeo and you know how important they are. Um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Ron and um, you know, <coughs> afford him an opportunity to take back some of the th thunder that I stole off of him and then <laughs> open it up to you folks. Thank you. My career path follows. Uh, it's, it's similar to Joe's. I've spent the last 25 years of my life <coughs> litigating cases in different courtrooms throughout the state. Uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I don't have the specialized knowledge uh, that Joe has with regard to representing districts directly, uh, but I have litigated against those issues throughout my career. I have litigated cases against all of the other candidates that are going to be before you as a board, and I've successfully litigated against them on various issues. And as we know, the law is, is dynamic. It's not static. It changes. It's based on facts. All facts are different depending on the issue before the board, an individual, a corporation. It just depends. So anybody that holds themselves out as a specialist in an area, knowing all facts 
or false all situations that may be confronted by them is is selling you uh, a bill of goods. I, I would suggest to you. Um, my first two jobs coming out of law school were in fact in the public sector and I'm thankful to this day of my first job which was with the public defender's office in Center County. It taught me about litigation, it taught me, it, it taught me about uh, dealing directly with the public which at 25 years old not many lawyers get to do. At 25 years old not many lawyers get to pick juries and, and advocate and argue for people largely, let's face it, that are, that are guilty in those circumstances. I enjoyed that experience thoroughly, and to this day, I, I enjoy it. Um, my second job was as an assistant solicitor. It was tied into a private firm, but it was at, as an assistant solicitor uh, for Beaver County, and I spent three years doing that, and I enjoyed the work very much. Uh, what I did not enjoy from time to time was the political aspect of it. So I tended to stay away from, from politics. What I'm most interested in is law. Uh, I'm interested in education, and I've told myself from time to time uh, that if I would, were to ever get back into uh, directly representing a board or a municipality, it would be uh, r related to education. And when this opportunity came up, when Joe approached me about assisting him in, in not only applying uh, for the position, but potentially uh, in covering the work that's going to be necessary. Given that I am a, a proud Beaver, Beaver grad, uh, I jumped at the chance. So I welcome the opportunity. Uh, Joe actually applied, but I, I welcome, um, or I appreciate the board giving me the time to introduce myself. Uh, and I'm prepared to answer any questions that the board may have, and I know that uh, Joe is as well. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Joe, I'd like to know um, what top three factors do you attribute to your success? I don't step down from a challenge. I thought that I just had that because I always wanted to be an attorney. Uh, so I had that fire in me. Um, I was just telling Ron on the way here. Um, my wife is uh, somewhat opposed to me taking this position because she has friends that she's graduated with. We're friends with community in this uh, district and she knows that I will try to do the right thing even if it's going to upset a friend. And I told her, I said, Hillary, that's the purpose of coming here because I want to better the community that you grew up in and I absolutely want to be a part of the community uh, in the district that my kids are now coming up through. Um, and she asked me, she's like, well, how is that going to affect you personally if it's an issue that's going to deal with your kids? And the bottom line is, Miss Yates, I represent a client. And at that point, my client is the school board. It's not a um, family member. It's not a friend that I may have on the board. It's not a business relationship that I may have on the board. It's not a stranger position. Um, and it's that fire. I think that's the most that you know, Ron, Ron had said it, 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 we were talking about it on the way here, 50 years old, I still have that fire in me. I do not back down from a child. I think you guys all saw that at the county level. I know what I've done, I've done things right, and I'm not afraid to stand behind what the law is. I'm not afraid to do it. And I'm, I, I, the only thing that we could do as an attorney you know, I tell my clients all the time, we can only offer you folks advice, and hopefully we're going to be providing you sound advice, and then you make your decisions from there. I have a question, and I want to preface, preface this just once, and I'm only doing it for the board and the public to understand why I'm asking this question. 
So this question I, I created obviously last week. It's probably already been answered, so I don't expect you to answer it, but you can you can if you want to. Uh, when I came on the board about two and a half years ago, <coughs> Bruce Woodsky kind of adopted me and he became my mentor. And although I have nearly 25 years of public education experience, being on the board and on this side, like Rob and I were just talking, it's a tough adjustment. You have to make some tough decisions. And I think that Bruce really mentored me. But one of the things that I saw in Bruce was that as a board member, he volunteered his time to really go over the documents, the contracts, um, the policies, the things that aren't sexy. And I wonder, I asked Bruce, why are you spending so much time doing this? Why, why do you, he said, because I care. And I realized, you know, he has a house in the district. His kids went through this system, and I believe now his grandkids are currently here. And what's more is that he has his practice in Beaver as well, so he's super invested in the community. And, you know, we have Weiss, Burkhart, Kramer, we'll call them WBK moving forward. And, and I'm sure they're, they're very capable, and I'm sure they're, they have a talented group of people. They're very large, and they represent some of the largest districts in the, in the city. But oftentimes, for me personally, and I did see it as a board, we, we focused and, and, and really kind of counted on Bruce to lead us through some tough times and contracts and things that, that may not have got the attention that, you know, we, we may have wanted to see. So I'm prefacing my question that had already been written, and I, I think that you've answered it, but if you want to take another <coughs> shot of it, what I'm going to ask everybody that comes through here tonight is how will your knowledge of our community assure your efforts to protect the legal interest of the Beaver Area School District. And, and I think that with Bruce, I understood his local knowledge of the community, and he answered that question to me repeatedly. And it's because he cares, and he had that knowledge, and he took that time. And I don't know, I don't know why he spent so much time and put so much effort into this, but I mean, it's a void that, that we've missed since he's, he's been gone the last couple months. So I really appreciate his mentorship and, and what he put into this. But that's why I'm asking this question, and I won't preface it again as we move forward. Sure, and I appreciate it because I love answering it. I, I, I answered it once, and I'll do it again. I love it. I'm going to let Ron talk, talk to it, but, um, you know, when I first started practicing law uh, coming out of Venezuela, there were five attorneys that I could depend on when I needed to ask a, uh, a question because I, I, I left a law firm uh, down in Caracas, Venezuela, uh, where I was just doing a, 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 a bunch of um, basically law clerk stuff, right? I, I was a um, fancy secretary, right? Because you're just, you're doing your internship, so they just pound you with documentation and so on and so forth. So anyway, my mom uh, gets sick, I come home, uh, and I didn't know an attorney. My, my dad was a steel worker. My mother was a retired school teacher. <laughs> Forgive me, because I just lost. But anyway, um, yeah, I got fired. You start a practice. Walk around the hallway, say hi to everybody, get to know everyone. And I learned a couple of attorneys, L. Steph. Jimmy Ross, Lucky Bowers, Bruce Woodsky, and Mitchell Shaheen. Anytime I called those guys, all five of them told me, Joe, if you ever need something, and they didn't know me, but Joe, if you ever need something, don't ever he hesitate to pick up the phone and call. And I did. So we're going back to 1998, where I used to pick up the phone and call Bruce Woodsky and L. Steph and John Salapak was another one. Um, with school law issues. In my book, you got two of the finest school solicitors here in this county, and it's a shame that they didn't apply for this job. And that's John Salapak and Al Steph, or his son. There's nobody that knows school law better than those two or three individuals. And I relied on those guys. So I understand what you're saying, Aaron, about um, Bruce Woodsky, because I still hold him high up on that list for me because he did help me along the way back in 98, probably my first eight to 10 years. Um, 
So I always had a fond respect for him. And to hear you say that doesn't surprise me. But the fact of the matter is, it's guys like that that got me where I'm at today. It's guys like that that I don't have to drive outside of Beaver County to find work. I don't have to advertise in a phone book or anything. It's the reputation that these guys <coughs> allowed me to build to put me here today before you and the rest of your board. Um, I'm vested. I pay taxes here. I got two kids that go here. I have a wife that went to school with some of you folks. I'm here. I mean, it, it, I am, of all of my solicitorships and clients, clients that I have, I have a bigger burden to excel and do the right thing here than I would anywhere else because I'll hear it from every angle. I'll hear it when, right? I'll hear it when I'm at a restaurant. I'll hear it when I'm riding my bike downtown. I'll hear it when I go home. I'll hear it from my kids, uh, so on and so forth. So, I mean, it is. I'm, I'm vested. I don't know how many other people could tell you I'm vested. I don't know who these other folks are that have kids that may be vested in this district or whatever. But I'm just looking around the room here. I know who was at that girls WPIL championship. Why? Because I was there. I know who attends these Beaver football games. Why? Because I was there. I know who attends the tennis matches. I have two boys, eight and ten, and I'm going to girls tennis matches. I'm going to varsity football, soccer. I'm there. I'm in the community. I, I mean, I don't know how much more vested I could be in the community. You know, when, when, when girls basketball needs donations, when the Girl Scouts need donations, they're not knocking on anybody's doors. I'll tell you whose door they're knocking on. And I'll tell you who, we, and we're always more than willing to participate. Whether it's a local nonprofit, whether it's the Girl Scout cookies, whether it's um, some fundraiser that you folks are holding, or just paying the $2 to get into a girls basketball game, or a, or a boys high school basketball game. I'm vested, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm. If you guys decide to give it to somebody, some other solicitor, that's fine. I'm still vested. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Am I going to be upset? Yeah, I'll be upset. I'm 50 years old. I'll get over it. Right? And I do want to apologize. I do want to apologize because I, I got the emotional with my mother. Um, she uh, was a school teacher, Freedom Area School District, very well respected. She was one of those women that always wanted to break that class seat. So, I apologize. Thanks, Jeff. I have a scenario question. Um, so, at last week's football game, two members of the football team and a drummer in the band and the assistant coach took a knee during the national anthem. The board and the superintendent are being urged to do something about it. What's your advice? And this is hypothetical. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is hypothetical. Did that happen? Sorry. There was no football game time. last week. <laughs> I know. I was thinking. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> what did you do? Luke's eyes got this big. No, I knew it. I, 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 I like the question. I like the question a lot. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically speaking, you know, and I think that I answered this a little bit. Um, I can only offer you guys advice, and that advice has to be in accordance to the law. I am your legal advisor. I am not your moral advisor. I am not your um, a spiritual advisor or anything of that nature. I think that if that issue were to come up, I'll tell you what I would do, is that I would uh, research the issue to make sure that nothing has changed from what I know as of it today. And I would give a, um, a written legal opinion to that as to what you can and can't do. First of all, what the law is. And based on what the law is, what you can and can't do. And then it's going to be up to the majority of the board to decide what action or what course of action this board decides to take. I can tell you what issues would be present, and, and again, it's fact intensive. One of the issues is: Are you talking about is it a, a home game, or is it an away game? Let's say it's a home game. It's so your direct 
it's it's direct on school grounds. It's affecting uh, Beaver High School. You have due process issues weighed with uh, equal protection issues, weighed with uh, against free speech, uh, weighed uh, in consideration of the school code and what's outlined within the code in and of itself. Um, just sort of echoing on uh, what Joe just mentioned, all we can do as the solicitors is give the board direction in the state of the law. What is the precedent? Uh, what is the legislation? Uh, we could probably float ideas politically on, on the effect of these decisions because, you know, let's call it what it is. It, it is a political position. Um, but that's why um, the nine of you spent, if not, if not years, months of your lives campaigning to be in the position that you're in. That's to make the difficult decisions based on the guidance provided uh, by those you rely on, the professionals you rely on, the solicitors. So we would point out those issues. I can't tell you where we would fall. We would need more facts and, 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 and more specifics about that. But it's a complicated issue. It's complex. We would, and all opinions should be welcomed. One of the things that's lacking, certainly nationally, but locally, is civil discourse and how we treat each other, even though we have differing, di differing opinions. And I would hope that if we're part of the process, we can at least have educated discussions amongst adults, even though half the time we may be disagreeing. Can I expand on that example? Absolutely. Let's hypothetically <coughs> assume the board is considering suspending that individual three days. And we turn to you and say, guys, are we gonna get our butts kicked? Are we okay doing this? The teacher we, or the coach? Uh, I thought it was a player. Well, you got a player, a band, an assistant coach. Did you specify who's, who Neil? Whoever? All, those three. Oh, those three. So yeah. all three of them. So all three of them. So we would, we, we I, I want to put a scenario in where the board is going to act on something based on that <coughs> example. And, and it, it's three days for the student, a day for the teacher, and whatever else. What does what your policy say currently? I'm, we don't have any. I, I, I'm Do less we? worried about policy and more worried about law, oh. specifically. Because yeah. uh, this would, I would assume this issue would go way above and beyond policy, and we would be looking at substantial legal uh, opinion way beyond what our policy says. It's important. I know policy is very, very important. But um, legally, and I hate, I'm, I know that Typically, a, a, an attorney and counsel would have an opportunity to, to, to look into it, research it, case law, precedents, all that kind of stuff. But let's say we did, we came to you and said, hey, we're, this is what we're going to do. You guys okay with that as our solicitor? Would, would, are, are we jeopardizing ourselves in any way? Well, it's interesting because, <clears throat> you know, when I said that we would look at the areas and, and, and provide you guys a written opinion, and then... Um, uh, Ron um, went into more detail. So when you say a student, uh, a, an employee, so you know the student's going to be different than the employee because you have a union contract. So it all depends on if that individual is in the union. If he is in the union, what's that union contract say? If you do have a policy, and the majority of the board is looking to uh, revise that policy, then we got to look at. Um, exactly what the board wants to revise because at that point you're already under the microscope yep. right any actions that you take that deviates hypothetically speaking I don't I'm not here to offer advice but hypothetically speaking any action that the board deviates from a past written policy and now you're gonna revise it to address a particular issue that just happened last Saturday now that microscope has gotten bigger and you're right there there, there will be um it, it won't be as simple as litigating it maybe here in the beaver county courts my guess is it's going to go straight to the federal courts because you're going to have discrimination issues uh, you're going to have um, national uh, outside influencers coming in to intervene on the matter whether it's on behalf of the school board whether it's behalf on behalf of one of the people that took a knee I mean, it, it, 
it's possible but you know those are those are one of the issues where the board has to tread lightly and I would expect the board to make a decision based on what we have given them or what their options are um, and to, to tell you right now I don't know what your options are because they're hypothetically speaking I don't know what your options are because there's a lot of I don't know what the policy I don't know what your hypothetical policy is I don't know what your hypothetical union contract is it's broad I know it's, it's hard to really hone in on it but um, but it will and I wasn't sure that it was that no. big on those three because it will and not go unnoticed let's just say that answer. right any decision the board makes whether you stay with the policy or change the policy whatever action the board takes it will not go unnoticed we all we we've seen that play out at the uh uh, at the professional sports levels. I have a couple more, but I don't want to hog up all the time. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else down there? Um, describe what you guys have done in the past, both of you, uh, that demonstrates your interest in better understanding your clients. Jeez, that's pretty easy. Um, I can make it harder. No, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, I feel like I wrote you that kind of question. Um, but it's very simple for myself because I tend to believe that um, I've always maintained a uh, boutique law firm or a law practice. I don't go out chasing uh, clients. I'm not waiting for my phones to ring. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I don't even have an ad. I quit running ads in the Times and in the, the phone books for years on end. Uh, I like to get a good handful of clients that I appreciate working for, uh, where it's not always good, but where you could form a relationship with them. Um, because more often than not, when you're working with an individual or a board, on a pretty regular basis you get to know each other's families you get to know each other's uh, personalities you get to know their dislikes their likes so you know i think that's very important that whoever your uh current solicitor or future solicitor is going to be is willing to recognize that uh different people different strokes and and you got to be willing to accept uh those people or your clients who they are and appreciate that um, I think I, I, if I know I said it and I'll say it again that now I don't think anybody's here better than anybody um, but at the same time I don't think that whoever that person is is better than anybody else I tend to believe that everybody's put on that same uh, level or, or that same surface and it's up to you it's up to myself and my client to forge a relationship um, it's going to be long lasting and you know Luke you asked that question and I just think back of like my current clients and my current solicitorships um, I mean I've had them for years on end and that goes to show that I am not here just for the work maybe I'm here because maybe maybe they have me because I give great legal advice I would like to think that right um, but uh, I, I think it's all about relationships. That, uh, you have to have a relationship with a client. Um, and I've always told my clients from day one, if you don't feel comfortable with me, then go out and talk to another attorney because if you don't feel comfortable with me today, I don't want you to be second, your, sec, second guessing yourself uh, six months down the road one, once we're into this massive civil litigation where we're picking a jury. And I, I think that's what the big part of it is. Thank you. Yeah, you don't, I don't understand my clients based on what they tell me in my office in professional capacity because half the time they're telling me what they think I want to know or what they think they should say. You get to know your clients directly, which is part of the beauty of being a solo practitioner and, and limiting the, the, the community within which you practice. And myself, Beaver, and Allegheny County would be that. But you get to know and understand your clients living among them. You get to understand their needs, their personalities, their families, their interests, their disinterests, their politics. 
who they are, all of those things. And the more exposure you have to them, then I think you're better able to counsel them. We're not only attorneys uh, responsible for knowing the law and applying the law based on facts, but we counsel them through problems that they're having. It sort of piggybacks on Aaron's question relating to Mr. Woodski is electing somebody, and this isn't an election, selecting somebody from the local community. We can't hide from, from anything. We're directly involved. It directly impacts who we are, how we practice. And that's the benefit of having somebody that lives in the community or primarily spends a lot of time within this community. I think that answers both of those questions. I didn't want to. Yeah. That's Thank the you. benefit. There's nowhere we can go because I'm going to see you, guys, all of you, uh, at some point very soon. And, and and there's more at stake. And Joe suggested the word vested. There's more at stake with every decision we make. And I'm guessing that's why Bruce, even though he wasn't your solicitor, he's a lawyer. His reputation's on the line. He spent that much time uh, uh, on whatever issue that. You know, he was talking to you about because you want to make sure you know all the details. And logistically, there's a benefit to that as well. Because you're, we're, I'm on 240 Commerce, he's on Third Street. Did you have a question? I'm going to ask a question. Oh, but yeah. okay, so. Any other questions? I got a quick one. It's just about. Um, <laughs> Our meetings, we obviously have a meeting the, the second Monday and the third Monday of each month. Joe, I'm guessing you're, would you guys uh, split those meetings or would you be attending each one? Um, or how would that kind of play out between the two of you? Um, depending on if I get selected, I would talk to uh, Midland School District and uh, Sean Tanner. I, I, I talked to them in the past to make sure they didn't have any conflict with me applying with this job as I did with a variety of my other clients uh, and Mr. Tanner uh, it stated to me that uh, he thought it, it might not be a problem that if we changed uh, the midland meeting so I could be in attendance for your meetings here um, so you know I, I don't know what the dynamics are there but if, if the times that I cannot be here uh, Ron would absolutely be here Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, guys. <clears throat>